It's 10 a.m. and this is WKYT Midmorning. Crews are investigating what caused an early morning fire here in Lexington. The homeowner says he believes it was set on purpose. The Lexington Humane Society is asking for your help after the storms on July 4th literally blew away proceeds from its largest fundraiser. And if you live in the Lexington area, looks like your water rates could be going up. How that might affect your bill. Coming up on WKYT Midmorning. This is WKYT Midmorning. Good morning to you and welcome in here on Wednesday, July 6th. We're glad you're along. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. So I was heading into work today. Such a pretty day, but you might be deceived by that. It may so not say, continue exactly the, like that. As long as you keep the window rolled up, right? And the air well, conditioning yes. on. That helps a lot. Extremely humid out there this morning. We want to check in with meteorologist Micah Harris. That's a tropical feel, and what we're going to be doing. Thunderstorms are slowly but surely rising to us in the Kentucky area. There we go with those thunderstorms heading our direction, and you can see that back toward the west and the northwest. Now, slight chance of severe weather back toward western Kentucky and off into Ohio River Valley. For us, it's a marginal chance, meaning it's a very, very small opportunity, a very small window of that severe weather. We're going to be talking about when these storms arrive coming up in a few minutes. Okay, some things to watch. Thank you. First, this mid morning, firefighters answered a call on Maryland Drive in Lexington earlier today, and the homeowner says he doesn't think the fire was an accident. The homeowner, who declined to give us his name, tells WKYT News that he had allowed two homeless people to stay in the garage, but his daughter kicked them out about a month or two ago because they were not repaying money. That had been loaned to them. He says no one else has been in that garage since the disagreement, so he believes they came back and set it on fire this morning. Nearby houses were evacuated because neighbors worried the flames would spread. A oh, woman over on the porch, she don't want to be interviewed though. She said that she actually saw someone run through, or she didn't see them, but someone ran through her backyard and hopped the fence over onto Third Street because her dogs went off after him. Firefighters are investigating claims that this is a case of arson. So far, they say it is too t soon to determine exactly how the fire started. A man who tried to speed away from the police is in jail this morning after getting stuck in his wrecked car. Police say an officer tried to stop Thomas Quinard for speeding. They say that's when he hit the gas and sped off. But moments later, Quinard crashed on the ramp from New Circle onto Newtown Pike. Police say they found a couple of stolen guns in the car. Quinard was not hurt in the crash and is now facing a list of charges. The National Weather Service has confirmed two tornadoes are responsible for damaging areas of Lawrence and Rock Castle counties. Meteorologists say an EF2 tornado touched down in Louisa Monday, producing winds up to 100 miles, 120 miles per hour. It caused damage throughout the community while nearly destroying a Walmart, which was packed with shoppers at the time. Store managers tell us they hope to have the grocery section reopened this Saturday, but say it will be another six to eight weeks before the rest of the store opens as well. In Rock Castle County, meteorologists say the tornado that touched down there was an EF1. Despite being less powerful, winds still reached up to 90 miles per hour. The tornado damaged seven homes in the Broadhead area. Most of the damage was along Hacker Lane, where several cars were flipped by the strong winds. Rock Castle County emergency managers say no one was injured, but many are still cleaning up damage this morning. Now remember, you can track storms when you're away from the TV with the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. You can download it for free in the app or Google Play stores. South African Olympic runner Oscar Pistorius has been sentenced to six years in prison for killing his girlfriend Reva Steenkamp on Valentine's Day in 2013. Pistorius was facing a possible 15-year jail term for shooting Steenkamp, but the judge ruled that substantial and compelling circumstances existed in the double amputee Olympic runner's case 
and gave him a lesser sentence. In California, police say a man tried to kidnap a little girl while her mom was shopping in a store, and it was all caught on camera. The store's owner says the woman told him that she had noticed a strange man in the parking lot. That man followed her and quickly grabbed the girl by the arm. The mom and another customer ran out, and the girl managed to break free, clinging to her mother's leg. Witnesses say the man then sat in traffic, and that's when some people nearby tackled the man and held him until the police came and arrested him. A well-known Lexington minister will be laid to rest today. The Reverend Wayne Smith died last week. As the founder of Southland Christian Church, the Reverend Smith grew the church into one of the largest in central Kentucky. Visitation for Smith is being held right now at Southland Christian Church on Harrodsburg Road. His funeral will follow at 1 o'clock this afternoon at Southland Christian. A Lexington firefighter forced to retire while battling cancer has died. Matt Logston was diagnosed with stage 4 neuroendocrine cancer in his liver, bones, and lungs in January. He started undergoing treatment in Chicago weeks later. Logston lived in Louisville but commuted to and from Lexington. He was assigned to the city's fire station 8. Lexington Battalion Chief Joe Best confirms Logston died just before 6 o'clock this morning. Funeral arrangements are pending. And friends and family are mourning the loss of Lexington Police Detective Philip Harrison, who also lost his battle with pancreatic cancer. Harrison was a 19-year veteran of the police department and leaves behind a wife and daughter. Uh, incredible losses, really, a two and happening first right responders. at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I know, really very is. sad. The Lexington Humane Society is at capacity right now, and the organization says it's in serious need, especially after Monday's storm washed away what is typically its biggest fundraiser. Monday, society representatives were trying to raise money for the more than 500 animals lodged at the facility. That's when the wind and rain hit the 4th of July festival in downtown Lexington, literally sweeping away donations. Nations. Victoria Benson said it hit home when she saw money floating down the street and into storm drains. All of a sudden the tents were lifting off the ground and across the street. All the merchandise got soaked. We had donation jars falling off the ground, breaking, and then dollar bills were just streaming down the street. We were trying to catch all of them. Donations are used to take care of animals until forever homes are found for them. There's more information on how you can help out at our website, WKYT.com. Lexington City officials and the city's fraternal order of police have signed off on a four-year contract. The contract includes pay raises for nearly 500 officers and sergeants, and it allows Police Chief Mark Barnard more flexibility for duty assignments. The contract also allows police to use cruisers for personal use at no cost. The contract is worth nearly $4 million over the four-year period. The Lexington Urban County Council has approved Kentucky American Water's proposed rate increase. According to our news partners at the Herald Leader, details of the settlement won't be released until later today. The water company is asking for a rate increase that would affect more than 100,000 customers in and around Lexington. On average, the proposed increase would add about $6 to the average residential customer's monthly bill. The settlement agreement must still be approved by the State Public Service Commission. The Ark Encounter Park in Grant County officially opens up tomorrow. Yesterday, 7,000 people got a sneak peek. The group behind the park, Answers in Genesis, says the people were supporters of the project. One man who lives out of state told us he liked what he saw and he plans to visit often. We're going to even buy a vacation home out here because we plan on coming here every year and trying to invite other people from Wisconsin and, and all our friends all across the state. Answers in Genesis projects that 2 million people will visit Ark Encounter in its first year. Ticket prices are $40 for adults and $28 for children. And keep it right here this mid-morning. A very special child receives a special gift, something he'll never forget. And J-Lo and Hamilton performing together, and it's a special song. We have storms on the way, and some of these will be strong, potentially even severe storms as we head throughout, not just today, but the next few days. I'm going to show you a rainy and a wild forecast coming up. Now, your zone-by-zone zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris.
Well, it's pretty calm and quiet right now, but things will change as we head throughout the next several hours. There are storms to the north of us. That's what we need to be watching out for. Let's get right into it. First alert, Defender Radar Network. And you can see that up toward the north. We're going to be watching these closely. This is the first batch of rain. Remember, as I talked about this morning, it's going to be several waves over the next few days. Here's your first wave. It's heading our direction slowly but surely. It's taken a long time to actually get here, another three to five hours before it actually even rolls into uh, north and northwestern portions of our viewing area. So just keep in mind, we have storms on the way. They will affect us later on this afternoon. We're at 80 degrees right now in Lexington, 79. Very popular number from Richmond to Danville. Danville back toward London, Corbin area. Mount Sterling coming in. Along with Hope Hill area and also Camargo, Jeffersonville, and Montgomery County at 79 degrees. Well, let me tell you that this that 80 degrees right now isn't all that bad. But when you throw in dew points like this, I rarely show dew points. Measure moisture in the air. This is like being at the beach right now. This is like being down in the deep south, Alabama, Texas, Louisiana. It is just downright muggy outside. It does not feel good. And we were this morning at 74 degrees temperature wise. And also sitting at 74 degrees, there were dew points. It was muggy, and it still is. It's going to be that way the next few days, 89 degrees by this afternoon. Those storms will continue to increase as we travel off into the afternoon and off into the evening hours. Overnight, there still is a possibility to see a few rumbles of thunder, too. Let's talk about your severe threat. How much uh, of these thunderstorms will actually make their way into our region and actually become severe? Well, I'll tell you, it's not a great chance. Marginal risk, marginal being the low end risk of severe weather, the lowest end risk of severe weather. Best chance. It's really going to be back toward Indiana and also western portions of Kentucky, but there is a marginal risk you can see for much of the region, meaning most of these will be strong thunderstorms, a lot of heavy downpours, a lot of lightning, and some strong winds, 40, 50 miles per hour. But there is an isolated threat of actually seeing damaging winds within these as they travel on through. Now, I wish I could give you a timing on this. But the deal is, these are waves of thunderstorms. These aren't lines of thunderstorms that are going to be traveling on through waves. This is just going to be wave, and then you get an hour or two break. Here comes another wave. So just look forward toward the afternoon, evening hours moves on in, and that's going to be the same story Thursday, Friday. Now, Saturday and Sunday, you guys, looks much better. That's the good news in the forecast. <laughs> you need to change your story, have some variations on nice? a theme or something. That'd be nice. The next three days look pretty active. Yeah. Well, those, yeah, uh, so then those temperatures and humidity back off of the weekend. That's right. It looks pretty good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, a bicycle, of course, is a memorable, memorable gift for most any child. But for a four year old boy in Oregon, it's something that's given him a new perspective on life. When he was born, Mason had severe physical and mental challenges and was deemed unable to do much of anything. But then recently, Jordan applied to a program that provides bikes to disabled children. He was not accepted. Less than 24 hours after a story aired on the local news, though, viewer donations raised the $4,000 it took to get Mason his own specialized bike. And now, thanks to the generosity of the community, Mason has a new activity, and that has put a real smile on his face. Oh, isn't what it nice that? to see how people respond? Yeah. Really wonderful. And that, of course, happened in Bend, Oregon. Yeah. Well, a special honor for Smokey Robinson and J Lo teams with the creator of the hit Broadway show Hamilton. And they're honoring the victims of the Orlando shooting. Daniel Nottingham has those stories and more in today's Eye on Entertainment. Jennifer Lopez and Hamilton's Lynn Manuel Miranda are joining forces to produce a song to honor the 49 people killed at an Orlando nightclub last month. Lopez released a sneak preview of Love Makes the World Go Round on YouTube. So far, there's no release date. Money raised will help fund mental health services for survivors of the shooting. Rhythm and Blues icon Smokey Robinson will be honored by the Library of Congress for his lifetime achievement in pop music. He's this year's Gershwin Popular Song Prize recipient. The 76-year-old Robinson helped create some of the biggest hits in Motown history as lead singer of The Miracles. A remake of the Spice Girls smash debut hit Wannabe is in the works. Spice Girls fan and British filmmaker MJ Delaney was nine when the song topped the charts 20 years ago. She assembled an international cast to promote girl power, education, and gender equality. Former Spice Girl Victoria Beckham says she thinks the remake is a great idea. That's your eye on entertainment. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Los Angeles.
All right, remember the old saying, ice cream, you scream, and we all scream for ice cream. Ooh, I love <laughs> this. How a Lexington ice cream store is marking the occasion with a party. Next on WKYT. And tonight's Powerball jackpot is $257 million. After nobody claimed the winning ticket for last night's Mega Millions drawing, Friday night's Mega Millions jackpot is now up to $508 million. This marks the 34th time the jackpot has rolled over without a winner. Good morning again. It's mid-morning on WKYT, and it is also National Ice Cream Month. And a popular Lexington spot is celebrating the occasion, along with its first birthday this Saturday. First birthday in this location right. where it is right, right, right now. Right. And to learn more, we're joined by Tal Green, Crank and Boom owner and master ice cream crafter. <laughs> Welcome. So glad Thanks to have you here. Thanks for having me, Bill Barbara. Well, it's congratulations, nice to because the deal is that, uh, yeah, you're, you're three years old as a business, right. but you've That's just right. been over at your current place. Correct. Here, right? We've only been in the shop for one year so we are throwing a big party on Saturday to celebrate we're gonna have a dance party we're gonna do giveaways all day um, the party starts at 12 and we're gonna go till 11 or later however long people want to hang Make around it fun. Yep. you know I think people have always had a love of ice cream but you really have elevated that to a new level well it, I think it just comes from my uh, cooking chef background is like oh this is a wonderful canvas to be creative and come up with fun things and really uh, blow people's minds you with ice cream and you certainly have done that. What so are the examples? Incredible toppings, including bacon, by the way. She yes. Told us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People love their bacon around uh, here. Show us sure. what you brought. Sure. We have a uh, mango sunrise, which is actually an L8 float with our mango sorbet um, with a little bit of grenadine and cherries. So it's very pretty. It is um, very, it's very pretty. tasty. Mm -hmm. And um, it showcases L8, of course, which is our um, favorite ginger ale around here. And then um, also we have a hard root beer float. Um, which has bourbon and honey ice cream, and then hard root beer, which is not your regular root beer float, so mm -hmm. it's for grown ups. Um, <laughs> it's <cake>. very delicious. <laughs> and then we have a strawberry balsamic sundae, and we make the strawberry sauce ourselves with uh, Boyd Orchard uh, strawberries. At the location where you are is so exciting right now with everything around it. Yes. But what does it feel like to be a, a, in the middle of all of that, oh, kind of a rebirth? It's, it's fantastic to be a part of making that. That area really interesting. Showcase it uh, for Lexington and for um, everybody. We've gotten a lot of national press. A lot of people are excited to come down there, see what Lexington's all about. And I think um, because we're all local business owners, everybody really wants to to really do our best and. Yeah. and Make a really awesome place of it. Tal, when you're coming up with uh, with recipes, you know, and you, you kind of you try it out, do you get surprised sometimes by the success of some of them? And um, oh yeah, we are very uh, into just trying stuff. So sometimes we'll throw things out there, and and uh, we think it's real exciting, and maybe other people don't think it's exciting, and then the opposite will happen sometimes. Sometimes we'll think, oh, we'll just give this a shot, and it blows up. Yeah. So um, that's why we just like trying stuff and so putting it out there. Fun, fun part of. The process. It is. Very quickly, best time to come to the birthday party this Saturday? Uh, you can come anytime, uh, 12 to 11 o'clock. The dance party will start at 7, so I would recommend coming down. There's no cover, um, it's family friendly, so please uh, come celebrate with us. We are just excited that uh, we have made it a year and hopefully many more years to come. Uh, right. It's a it special, is, uh, special place, special project. Big day at uh, Crank and Boom. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Keep and it right here this mid morning. Back in a moment, we'll check in with the Mr. Food Test Kitchen next and see what's cooking up right here in the middle of the week. Coming up a little later, it's WKYT News at noon. Our team is working to put it together right now. We'll follow up on the fire in downtown Lexington. The homeowner there believes someone may have set fire to his garage. We'll have more on FBI Director James Comey's re recommendation that Hillary Clinton not be charged with a crime following an email controversy. And we'll have more on the Lexington firefighter who lost his battle with cancer. News, weather, and sports ahead at noon on WKYT. Well, it's a national, this is National Fried Chicken Day, and everybody has a favorite recipe. Pretty exciting, huh? Even the folks in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, their chicken has real crunch and lots of flavor. When it comes to making fried chicken, there are a few tricks that can take it from just okay to absolutely amazing. And today, we're sharing those tricks with you so you can enjoy award-winning fried chicken all summer long. The first thing you want to do is make sure your chicken is nice and plump. Then place it in a large bowl of ice-cold salted water. This will help make the skin extra crispy. 
After soaking it for about 20 minutes, we dredge it in some seasoned flour before dunking it into a buttermilk bath. Another trick to making sure our coating is super crunchy is to use self-rising flour. That's our secret ingredient. Now the chicken goes back into the flour mixture one more time before it goes into some hot oil. And you want to make sure the oil is about 300 degrees, which is just the right temperature to make sure the chicken cooks through, but it's not too hot that the breading burns. Once the crust is golden and no pink remains, it's time to drain it on a cooling rack rather than paper towels. Does this look good or what? And whether you eat it hot or cold, I know you'll be going back for seconds and even thirds. So to indulge in this classic comfort food, why not go online and get the recipe for our classic fried chicken? I know you won't be disappointed. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a crispy, crunchy way for you to say, Ooh, it's so good. <laughs> that is crunchy. <laughs> crunchy, yes, <laughs> mac and cheese, yes. and a little watermelon. Don't understand the watermelon, but that's okay. The, the chickens still look good. Let's talk about these storms and what, when we're expecting these. Nothing going on right now. It's pretty calm, it's pretty quiet. But you look to the north of us, and it's already rolled through Indianapolis. Now through Bloomington, and then make your way back toward Evansville. Evansville is going to get in in the mix here in just about an hour. Now that heads our direction. It's slowly but surely moving. I mean, it's really taking its time to get here, and we'll expect that as we travel off into the afternoon hours, guys. It at 80 degrees, that doesn't sound too bad right now, but you throw that humidity out there. And oh, and it is gross. out there. Oh yes. yes. Okay, is. don't be surprised when we hear those rumbles later on. Right. We'll see you back here for the latest at noon.